Is he really trying to like put game on me in front of everyone? In front of everyone? I just met you at the bar like two seconds ago. Pew, 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 pew. Hey babies, it's Joy Navon and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So in today's video, I wanted to do something completely different from what I usually do here on the channel. And hopefully this is the first of many, but long story short, um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. Sometime last week, I was asking you guys for content ideas, video ideas, because I am trying to be absolutely super consistent on YouTube this year. And a lot of you guys were requesting like music related content, like chit chat related content. And for me, I am a huge music junkie, of course, but also to film junkie. Like I watch movies and documentaries and listen to music and that's literally all that I do. And something that I really like to do as well is like break down films and like dissect films. So I thought what better way to like jumpstart this whole like chit chat video, hopefully like thing that I do now on my channel, than to talk about something that I recently saw that is a cult classic, a fave among a lot of us, especially in the black community. And that is the movie Love Jones. Love Jones, you guys, I have been a huge Love Jones fan since, my childhood like I've always liked that movie and I recently saw it again for the first time in years um, and it is just the way that I experience life now and like the way that I've gone through relationships has given me a completely different perspective on this movie now so I just wanted to talk about it and also while I talk about this movie with you guys I am going to be doing my makeup beating my face as I typically would so let's just go ahead and jump into this conversation so everything that I use on my face today is going to be linked down below in the description box you know just in case you're interested so love Jones is a movie that was released in 1997 and it was actually directed by someone named Theodore Witcher Theodore from what I found has only worked on this movie like he's never actually done any other movie um, I don't that's not really important but I just figured I would throw that out there because I feel like it's really rare that like you watch a movie and then the director has done nothing else <laughs> except for that movie especially since the movie came out in 97 and it was a really successful movie this movie was originally a screenplay so Love Jones takes place in Chicago and it is a romance drama comedy so like a dramedy um and it is set in a very urban setting so the movie starts out with Nia Long's character Nina and she's packing up and she's moving and you're kind of getting like the vibe the energy of her being kind of sad and like disappointed she's going through the stages and emotions of someone who just broke up or just got out of a serious relationship. So she's with her homegirl and they're just kind of discussing the fact that they're over relationships, they're not into love, like love is just for the birds and we're moving on, that's it. No, falling in love. Oh, shit. Because that shit has played out like an H. Hello, hello. So the next thing that happens is that we are introduced to the squad. There is a group of friends and they're all hanging out in like their local favorite go-to bar. It's like a bar that has live music, spoken word. This is the 90s. It's a vibe. It's like jazz. Like everything is just very like chill and like moody. So the group consists of a few guys, to be exact, three guys and one girl, and her name was Sheila. So Sheila was like pretty much characterized as like the typical home girl at that time. Like, you know, that kind of girl that's like just the coolest around the way girl. She has like a lot of guy friends and they just all crack jokes on each other 
and you know everything's good like they gossip and she kind of gives like the female perspective of like y'all don't know what y'all talking about women are this women are that <laughs> and y'all have no idea so as they're all just sitting there and talking and discussing things another character which is named hollywood hollywood is like the complete player like he gives off player energy player vibes or at least he's trying to because he completely just wants to be seen as someone who can get all the girls he's very cocky he's very into himself and all he wants to do is just prove the fact that he is all about women he knows exactly what women want and that is him i don't need poetry to get women no, you need a personality mm, to get women. Mm, try a breath mint and a visa. <laughs> now, when it comes to Lorenz Tate's character, Darius, one of the main characters, he is completely nothing like Hollywood, in my personal opinion. I feel like he reads more as also a player, but kind of like easygoing. Like he's very cultured, he's into poetry, he's into art and books, he's an aspiring writer. So he just kind of has more of a smooth approach to like, you know, women and dating and all of that, but it's not very in your face. Now Hollywood hates this, he hates it. He's super jealous of Darius, like, he envies Darius so much and it's very clear from like the first five minutes in the movie. Like he just feels like Darius thinks that he's all that and that he's just, you know, he could get any girl that he wants and it's, he's just, he's just jealous. He's a hater. Like that's just what it is. He, he's a hater. Devon, you can't tell me that these babes can't see that cool pose shit coming a mile off. You know, brother, jealousy is a sickness. Let it go, man. Sickness. Now for me, the fact that they are quote unquote friends in the movie, I feel like that was more of just a friend of a friend kind of situation. You know, like when you have like a group of friends and then one of the friends in the group has another friend that y'all don't really know like that. I feel like that's how Hollywood's character came about. I feel like he's not someone that they've all been friends with for like years and years and they're super close. Like I feel like he was kind of introduced to the group. I don't know, I could be wrong. I don't know if that was the way that the writer planned on writing the character in, but that is the vibe that I got. So as we're all in the bar and there's live music playing and there's spoken word happening in the back, Nia Long walks in, AKA Nina and she's with her homegirl who was helping her move and they are just like you know what let's just go out let's just have fun and be girls and while they're there nina goes to the bar and while she's at the bar darius goes to the bar so this is the point in the film where it's made clear that these are the two main characters and these are the two people that we're going to be paying attention to they are about like something is about to happen so they're at the bar and you know it just is what it is like somebody walks up to you at the bar and you're trying to keep it cool you know you might find them attractive but you don't want them to know off rip that you find them attractive you got to be cute about it so that is what Darius was trying to do like he was like oh oh Nina knew that he was, she knew that he was looking. So for her, it was just kind of like, look, I just broke up with somebody. I'm not really here for y'all boys. Like I'm not thinking about, I'm not thinking about you. <laughs> so she's kind of giving off an energy that's like, I'm not really that into you, but you're cute. So I'm, ju I'm just gonna listen to what you have to say. As they're having their conversation, Darius gets called up to the stage because like I said, they're in a bar where they do spoken word and stuff like that. So he was up next as like the next act to do his poetry or his spoken word. Nina is sitting there with her friend and she's like, you know, she doesn't go back to the table and let her friend know that this is a guy that she was just talking to, but I think it's kind of just understood. Like everyone understands what's happening here. So he gets up on this stage and he says that the poem he's about to recite is called A Blues for Who? Nina. So that's kind of like the first point made of him being smooth. So Nina is just sitting there like, does he really have game? Like, is he really trying to like put game on me in front of everyone? In front of everyone? I just met you at the bar like two seconds ago. So he starts reciting this poem and it is very suggestive. Say baby, 
Can I be your slave? I've got to admit, girl, you're the shit girl. And I'm digging you like a grave. Who am I? <laughs> well, they all call me brother to the night. And right now, I'm the blues in your left thigh. Trying to become the funk in your right. Nina realizes that she's not really feeling the things that he had to say. Like, it was smooth. It was cute. It was a nice attempt. But she wasn't really all that impressed by everything that he had to say, or at least she's trying to act like she's not impressed. So the night ends and they all kind of congregate outside of the bar and Nina and her friend rolls up on them. Darius is kind of looking like, okay, so it worked. I'm totally about to get her number. Like watch how a play a play. And she pretty much plays him now in front of all of his friends. And she lets him know that she wasn't impressed, basically like that wasn't impressive to her. It was kind of embarrassing and kind of inappropriate for him to be making sexual references to someone that he just met in front of a whole crowd of people. So she was not here for that at all. And she tells him that he needs to start thinking of love as opposed to just sex. So fast forwarding, we kind of get to know some more about Nina at this point. Nina is someone who is a entrepreneur. She is a photographer or a aspiring photographer and she's working on set and like kind of trying to just get her feet wet and like do her own thing. You know, she's establishing footing for herself as a like independent woman, single woman. She goes to a record store. Come to find out the record store is ran by Sheila. Remember Sheila is the friend from the beginning who is like the only girl in the friend group with all the guys. She is the employee at the record store and Nina goes in there and just starts kind of, you know, browsing. She remembers her like they remember each other from the bar and moving on. So while Nina is in there shopping, Darius finds his way to the record store. This is just a coincidence. This is not like on purpose, but this is like the second time that they meet. So this is definitely like a second chance for Darius. He realizes that that's the same girl from the bar the other night and this is his shot. Like he doesn't have any other shot again to make a move on Nina. So he's gonna take his shot. He's gonna shoot his shot. But once again, Nina rejects it. <laughs> And he's trying so hard to like impress this girl and she's just really not impressed. He goes to the farthest extent of getting her address and phone number from the record store. Now his friend works at the record store so he just feels like, hey, like you're my home girl, do me the solid, give me her information. And she does. She should have definitely got fired for that, but you know, whatever, it's a movie, like we're moving on. <laughs> So Darius winds up going to Nina's apartment. He goes to her apartment and he knocks on the door and basically shoots his shot again. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if somebody rolls up on me at my apartment and I look through the peephole of my apartment and it's the same person, <laughs> that I was just talking to in the grocery store or something that's been trying to make a move on me like two, three times already. I'm not answering the door. She actually answered the door and let him in her apartment. Like, you, I'm not answering the door. You could be crazy. Like, I don't know if this man is a serial killer or like something. I don't, I don't know him. But she opens the door, she lets him in, he comes bearing gifts. It's a whole thing. So they get to know each other a little bit better and by the end of the night, basically, he asks her to come hang out with his friends. Like, hey. I want to take you out. I want you to come kick it with my peoples. Like, we're going to be going to my friend's house. They're having, like, a little party, a little gathering, a little sit down. Let's go and, you know, hang out and get to know each other some more. Spend some more time together. And she's like, you know what? Fine. I'll go. I'll go with you. Now this is the part of the film where things pretty much are established as them really liking each other. They really like each other now. 
they're basically about to be a couple in a minute. He won. <laughs> he got the girl. Male God would never allow a creature made in his own image to get jammed up like that. Uh, wait, excuse me, but why? Are you trying to impress your date? Please. <laughs> so all of this is real cute and, and good in the hood and peachy keen until Nina has to go to New York or she decides to go to New York. Here is the kicker. Here's the kicker. Her ex, that same ex that she was trying to get over in the beginning that she just moved out of her apartment with, he is where? In New York. So Darius catches wind of this. You know, Nina lets him know like, hey, I'm gonna be going out of town. This is what's this is what's going on. This is my situation. And he is just really not here for it. He's not here for it. Like his ego is bruised. He's trying to fake the funk basically and act as if everything is all good. Like he's not gonna miss her. Like, okay, you wanna go to New York? You you can go to New York. I'm falling for you, but you could go to New York. So you're not mad. <laughs> Hell no, I'm not mad. I Miss mean, cool. We just friends, right? Yeah. What does she do? She goes to New York. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and reel it in. Let's reel it in. Now as for Darius, he's just beside himself at this point. Like he doesn't know what to do. He has never felt like this about anyone before. He's never anticipated himself falling in love. Like he was not expecting to meet this girl and just she be everything that he pretty much was looking for in a woman and be completely infatuated with her but he is he completely is now while nina was in new york she did what she went there to do which was like see about work and stuff like that and she also got back into a situation with her ex-fiance and while she's there she realizes that she really <laughs> really 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 does not want to be with him she doesn't regret leaving him in the way that she may have thought she did at first he wants things for her and for them that she absolutely just does not want and they have completely opposing ideas of what a relationship should be between them and just nothing about them as a couple worked and in my personal opinion I feel like even though they recently officially broke up, their relationship was over a long time ago. Like she knew that that wasn't the right situation for her a long time ago. But I also feel like Nina had this just overall desire to be loved. She was looking for love. Like she was looking for that companionship between her and you know someone else that was just going to cherish her and support her and her dreams and her goals and just let her just be who she is and you know like she wanted that very badly and i feel like it started to become solidified in her mind that that is what she had in darius and that is what she really wanted so what does she do she goes back to chicago while she's back in chicago she makes it back into town she's ready to see darius she doesn't tell him that she's back she doesn't call him and tell him that she's back but she sees him at the record store outside of the record store with another woman wait a damn minute <laughs> what? yeah He's moved on. He went ahead and found him someone to really occupy his time. <laughs> now Nina sees this and she's just completely, completely disappointed. Like, what can I do? What am I gonna say about that? Like, I was in New York, I can't say anything about that. Now, Nina, like I said, I feel like she, she, she really just wants someone, <laughs> so. She finds out that he's seeing someone else and she just completely goes on about her life. Uh, with that being said though, Darius did know that she was back. He knew she was back. Like there's no way he didn't know that she was back. So they didn't reconnect. Let's just say that. They never reconnected when she got back from New York. But she did start dating again. And guess who she started dating? Guess who she started dating? Hollywood. Well, just as I thought, trash. Yes, I know, like, of all people. <laughs> of all 
people. So she's dating Hollywood and let's just talk about this guy again. So he is, like I said, the ultimate player, the ultimate hater of Darius especially. I feel like from the jump, Nina knew, or she should have known, maybe her judgment was clouded, but from the jump, she should have known he did not have good intentions. Like it was just something for him to be able to say, I got the girl, I got your girl. And like, look what I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, he didn't have any interest in you, Nina. And you decided to date still within the friend group. I was, I, th at this point, I was just very disappointed. I, I was just very disappointed. So now eventually word gets back to Darius that Nina and Hollywood is a thing and that they're messing around. And of course, Darius is just not, like he's like, what? Really? That's how you feel? So you're not even gonna call me when you get back, but you're gonna then go mess with my homie? You're gonna go mess with my homie now? Okay. So what you been up to, man? You know, just putting in work, man. Really? Really. See, I got this new gig. Keeps me up, working all through the night. The late shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that, like, at this point, the both of them had a completely immature way of going about this situation. Number one, I think we, most of us can all agree that Nina should have called him. Like you should have called him. You should have let him know that you were ready to be all in. Like I could understand her not wanting to disrupt anything that he had going on with someone else, but it's important for you to at least, you could have just, y'all could have, you could have talked to him. Like you could have talked to him. Let me know in the comments down below how you would have went about this or if you had a similar situation to this before and what did you do? Like, I don't know. I feel like this is one of those situations where if you've never had it happen to you before, it's easy for you to just say, you should have did this, you should have did that. But like being in those shoes and having to deal with all of these emotions happening at once, like you might go about it really differently. So, I don't know, I'm curious. So after time goes by, she stops seeing Hollywood and her and Darius get back into a relationship. Like they actually get into a serious relationship. And while they're together, things really just don't pan out. There was a lot of like insecurity happening. There was a lot of blame happening still you know for Darius towards Nina about her dating Hollywood in the first place and for me I have absolutely no idea how they went into a relationship like a serious relationship living together and all type of stuff without communicating about this first there's no way that I'm gonna have history with someone and then something crazy happens between us and then we just pick up and keep going like nothing happened without talking about it first like there's no way we could have not talked about that before like getting in a serious relationship and moving in together and like trying to start a life like that wasn't just going to be erased like you thought that that wasn't going to come up again like you have to communicate these things first like i don't know why they just i don't know so if you're actually someone who's never seen this movie i'm not going to tell you the ending because i would like for you to go watch it for yourself and really like see how it ends and like come back and let me know what you think of the ending because i have a lot of ways <laughs> that I feel about the ending. I feel like it's more important to talk about the overall dynamics of their relationship and their lack of communication. I feel like that was the biggest issue in their relationship. They didn't have any type of communication whatsoever. From the time that Nina said that she was going to New York, I feel like that should have been at least the first time that they sat and had a serious conversation about how they felt and like what the plans were and you know all of that like I don't feel like that should have waited you know a year or so later after you started dating someone else and I started dating someone else and then we came back together like, I don't feel like all of that was necessary I feel like they could have talked about that beforehand and I feel like it was messed up for Nina 
not explaining to Darius, once she realized that she was really into him, she didn't express her past. Like she didn't talk about her feelings towards her ex-fiance and like why that ended or how that ended or like whether she was over it or not. Like she didn't bring up her ex-fiance at all until she was leaving. So it was just kind of like, I could understand how that would have blindsided him. Like, oh, like, what is this all about? And the same with Darius. I feel like Darius held on to so much resentment and, you know, just negativity towards her when it came to the fact that she dated Hollywood. I feel like it really showed, especially too, once they got into a relationship after, you know, she got back and after her and Hollywood broke up or like stopped dating or talking, like he really showed how salty he was and how bothered he was by that still. It's like, if you would have just brought that up, if y'all would have just talked about that, all of that could have been avoided. Growing up, Love Jones was one of my favorite movies. Like I have a huge, huge place in my heart for like movies from that time, especially black romantic movies from that time because I feel like that's when all of them were happening. You had, this movie, you had Brown Sugar, which was kind of like early 2000s, but you had The Best Man, like Love and Basketball. There were like a lot of black romantic movies happening at that time. And I really appreciate all of the art that was created at that time, especially around black cinema. And watching those movies as a youngin, as a child, as a preteen, is totally hitting different as a full-grown adult, full-grown wife in a minute, like all of that. Like everything is just hitting different. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this and if you would like to see me make more videos like this where I'm talking about especially black movies from the 90s, I am totally here for that. I am all the way here for that. So let me know down below in the comments if you're interested in that and let me know what movie you would like to see me talk about next. All right, you guys, so I went ahead and finished the rest of my makeup and just put on my, you know, typical signature lip that I do in my head wrap and stuff. Very basic, very neutral. We know, I know it's nothing exciting, <laughs> but maybe next time I'll do something a little bit like extra. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really fun for me to do. I really enjoyed this. I hope you guys liked it. I really am curious to see what you guys have to say about this in general. Hopefully, you know, I don't know. Just give me some feedback. Give me some feedback. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel for more and turn on the notification bell so that you're actually notified of every single time I upload a video. I'm working on doing multiple times a week um, of videos, but you know, we just gonna see. Um, also too, follow me on Instagram at joinavon and like this video if you liked it. And until then, I will just see you guys in the next one. Bye.